Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays! As we approach the new year, SpaceX continues to make strides towards their next integrated flight test with Booster 10 and Ship 28. Along with the seemingly never-ending upgrades to the launch and production sites, including the second orbital launch integration tower starting its journey to Starbase, there's a lot to unpack in this update, so let's dig in! Starting off this week, shortly after midnight Friday morning, with Ship 28 secured to Test Stand B, the crane was disconnected from the vehicle. Later that morning, the lines that secured Ship 28's flaps during transit were removed and the ship took the opportunity to stretch its wings. First, both its forward and aft flaps were opened, then several actuation tests were performed with all four flaps. Over at the build site, work continued on the newest phase of the Star Factory expansion as another one of the columns was lifted and installed onto its awaiting embed. At Massey's, crews have made good progress on the new warehouse building, with much of the exterior cladding now installed. Nearby, the S24.2 test article had been removed from the structural testing cage and released from the crane. Up the road at the Sanchez site, the third of the new white booster engine installation stands appeared to be nearly complete and ready for its move to join the other two in Mega Bay 1. What is believed to be the floor for the new ship engine installation stand was spotted being carried out of the Sanchez site on its way to Mega Bay 2. Over at Mega Bay 2, the LR11000 crane was spotted lifting Z girts for installation above the windows, which the final sections of cladding will attach to. Back at the launch site complex, crews began installing the flexible cryogenic piping at the back of the booster quick disconnect on the launch mount. These new hoses are replacements for the ones that were removed following the second integrated flight test. As the pipe section was being installed, the long-awaited Booster 13 aft section finally made an appearance in the ring yard. Less than an hour later, the section was moved into Mega Bay 1. Booster 13's LOX tank has been fully stacked for quite some time now, just waiting while crews finish this aft section for it to be stacked on top of it. At the Rocket Garden, crews were spotted installing a metal belt onto Ship 26's payload bay just above the forward dome section. Seeing crews working on this shieldless and flapless starship may well indicate that SpaceX still has plans for it. Outside the orbital tank farm, a large loop of prefabricated cryogenic piping was seen laying on the ground in front of the horizontal tanks, likely awaiting for installation as part of the tank's farm upgrades. By the afternoon, crews were wrapping up the installation of the new flex hoses to the booster quick disconnect. It is not clear if there was a failure in the old hose here, or if the new piping is somehow an upgrade, or if SpaceX is simply replacing it out of abundance of caution. Late Friday afternoon, the Raptor Roost camera caught one of the Starlink ground stations spotted at Sanchez last week being lifted and installed on top of the new concrete building nearby. With Ship 28 now safely secured to Test Stand B, the LR11000's work was done for the moment. It was then driven across the launch site and parked near Highway 4 in front of the horizontal tanks at the Orbital Tank Farm. In the early hours of Saturday morning, crews in Mega Bay 1 were hard at work as Booster 13's liquid oxygen tank section was lifted and stacked onto the nearby arrived aft section. This completes the stacking of the booster from its base up to the common dome. Meanwhile, the top ring of what is believed to be a new ship engine installation stand was spotted being lifted for installation inside the new Mega Bay. This installation lends credence to the theory that this new building will be for ship construction with Mega Bay 1 continuing as a booster production facility. Later that morning, the road was closed as SpaceX looked to perform some rare weekend vehicle testing. Once the pad was cleared, SpaceX started off by performing some testing on the orbital tank farm. This testing was likely to verify the recent upgrades to the farm and also to clean out any debris that got into the piping during the work. As testing was finishing up on the orbital farm, the test stand tank farm began spooling up, indicating more testing to come. Eventually, propellant was loaded into Ship 28, its engines were chilled, and it performed a spin prime test of its Raptor engines. Back over at the build site, concrete trucks were seen entering and exiting the construction site of the Star Factory expansion. 
These trucks were supplying a concrete pump truck that was placing new concrete sections of floor slab for this next section of the building. Eventually, the pour was finished and the pump truck packed up and left. As the pad was reopening from the latest round of testing, a PA announcement was heard over Rover 2 declaring the grand opening of the Delta 1 gate. This gate, also called the D1 gate, is located by the test stand tank farm and has been closed in recent weeks as crews performed a complete overhaul of the entrance. On Saturday night, SpaceX sponsored a drone show at Isla Blanca Park, across the shipping channel from Starbase. An army of drones lit up the South Texas skies, dazzling spectators with a wonderful light show that even included a starship flying overhead. On Sunday, the remaining Starlink ground stations joined the first on the roof of the new Sanchez building. In the end, nine antennas topped the structure, doubling the number of ground stations at Starbase. That evening, the floor for the third of the new booster engine installation stands was moved from Sanchez to Mega Bay 1. This floor panel can function as a Raptor elevator, lifting the engines up into the booster's engine bay for installation. Several hours later, the main ring of the newest engine installation stand followed its floor panel to the build site. It was then parked in the ring yard while crews prepared for its installation inside of Mega Bay 1. Just after midnight on Monday morning, the chopsticks were raised up the launch tower in preparation of their arrival of Booster 10. Just a few hours later, Booster 10 was moved out of the rocket garden and through the Sanchez site to the gate next to the ground fabrication building. Then around 4.30, the booster was rolled onto Highway 4 and began its first trip to the launch site. As the Super Heavy made its journey, we were able to see that SpaceX workers had once again decked out the transporters and stand with festive Christmas decorations. About two hours after leaving the Sanchez site, the booster turned into the launch complex and headed to the orbital pad where it was parked between the open chopsticks. That afternoon, the rear hood for the booster quick disconnect was lifted onto a transporter and moved back over near the orbital launch mount in preparation for its reinstallation. Down at the build site, crews were working to finish up the final corner of the first phase of the Star Factory's nose cone haul. Meanwhile, additional steel was arriving and being prepared for installation on the next phase of the taller end of the building. This looks to be a new workstation that will be used to weld ship nose cones together inside the new hall. Back at the build site, crews were spotted testing and inspecting the welds on the lifting points of one of the new cryo shells at the orbital tank farm. This work combined with the location of the LR-11000 could indicate that the shells will soon be removed from the two tanks closest to the methane side of the farm. Early Sunday morning, some additional new hardware was spotted being moved into the Star Factory expansion from the Sanchez site. This equipment is possibly a flap support jig, which would be used to hold the flap supports in position while they are being welded to the inside of the nose cones. That afternoon, preparations were complete, and it was time to install Super Heavy Booster 10 onto the orbital launch mount. First, the chopsticks were raised to the lifting points and took the weight off of the rocket. Then, the clamps were released and the booster raised slightly. After that, the clamp arms were retracted, followed shortly after by the stand's alignment pins. With everything now out of the way, Booster 10 was lifted free of its transport stand and moved over to the launch mount, giving us our first good look at the engine section. Eventually, the rocket was lowered into the mount and clamped in place, completing the lift. Later, SpaceX illustrated their desire to move quickly with the vehicle's testing. Just hours after Booster 10 came to rest on the orbital launch mount, we saw a test of the mount's detonation suppression system. Right after the test, the chopsticks were open and raised further up the tower. Once the chopsticks were high enough, the ship quick disconnect arm was rotated back into position, indicating that the chopsticks would remain up above. In this photo of the new and improved D1 gate from Tuesday, we can see that work is underway on a new structure just inside. Could this be a new guardhouse? Knock yourself out in the comments below. Early the next morning, a crane lifted the rear hood of the booster quick disconnect and positioned it for reinstallation, likely completing the refurbishment of this part of the launch infrastructure. Later that same morning, Sentinel camera caught the continued installation of the windows for the top of the new Mega Bay, with the work rapidly nearing the final corner of the building. 
Over at the Raptor's Nest building on the back side of Mega Bay 1, a fresh delivery of Raptor engines was spotted being offloaded. We can see that they have a specialized telescopic bridge crane in this building that can extend out of the building's door to pick up the engines straight off the back of the truck and bring them inside the building. Down the road at the launch site, the road was closed and the pad cleared ahead of another day of testing. The test stand tank farm came to life and soon propellant was loaded into Ship 28 for the second time this week. Then, shortly after 1.30 p.m. local time, Ship 28 performed its first static fire. An ex-post from SpaceX later informed us that this was a successful full-duration burn from all six of the vehicle's Raptor engines. Several hours later, we saw that the Starship's testing for the day was not yet complete. Just before 5 o'clock, Ship 28 performed a test of its payload door, opening and closing it. As of now, we are still unsure if SpaceX is planning to test payload deployment on the next flight test. At Massey's, work is still pushing forward on the development of the test site. A crane was seen installing a new small vertical tank behind the large horizontal rib cryogenic tank that arrived in recent weeks. At the other side of the site, cladding installation looked to be complete on at least two sides of a new warehouse building as crews worked towards making the building weather tight. At the Sanchez site, another one of the cryogenic storage tanks looked as if it was being prepared for transport. With the recent dismantling of the site's air separation unit, the tanks are no longer needed here and are slowly being moved elsewhere by SpaceX. Steady progress was evident once again on Wednesday with the expansion of the new Star Factory. New columns and beams continue to go up on the next phase of the building, while cladding installation has begun on the last corner of the previous section of the nose cone hall. Back down at the launch site, SpaceX's festive spirit was on display once more. This time, a front-end loader decked out with lights, balloons, antlers, and more was parked next to the newly reopened D1 gate at the Gateway to Mars sign. That evening, crews began removing the scaffolding from the top of the orbital launch mount as they worked to prepare for Booster 10's first round of testing at the launch site. A short time later, the launch mount work platform was spotted seen on its transport stand and heading out of the launch site. We've seen that SpaceX prefers to store the platform by the payload processing building during booster testing. Then, in the early hours of Thursday morning, the LR-11000 was rotated to put it back towards the orbital launch mount, yet another sign that SpaceX was preparing for booster testing. At the build site, testing preparations weren't going to slow down progress on the Star Factory expansion. A concrete pump truck was once again spotted, placing more concrete for the building's foundation. Meanwhile, crews continue to install the final section of cladding on the building's previous phase, and steel deliveries continue to roll in. Rovercam caught a crane lifting the first of the roof beams for this latest section of the building. Before long, a second beam followed the first. Installing these beams one at a time rather than in prefabricated roofing sections seems to be just the latest way that the construction of this phase differs from the others. By Thursday, the final full-size windows had been installed into Mega Bay 2. Now all that remains for the glaziers is the final corner sections and the building's tall wrap-around wall of windows will be complete. Crews continue to work installing stringers around the payload section of Ship 26. Interestingly, these stringers are not tapered like we would expect to see on a flight-ready vehicle and their installation required the removal of the lower load points for the chopstick stabilizer arms. The road was closed Thursday morning and eventually the pad cleared of workers. A lot of activity was seen from the orbital tank farm as it spooled up and then began loading propellant into Booster 10. With an overpressure notice having been sent out to the villagers, excitement was in the air as speculation went wild on whether they would spin prime or move straight into a static fire of the rocket. Unfortunately, neither panned out as there seemed to be some issues with Stage 0. Eventually, some workers returned to the pad and the road was reopened to the public. Although venting was still visible and the piping on the liquid oxygen subcoolers was still frosted over. Over in Florida this week, we were treated to some rare Starship related activity. The two vertical tanks that had previously sat at the Sanchez site before later being moved to Florida and stored first at Launch Complex 39A, then at Roberts Road, were moved back to the docks by NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building. 
On Friday, the tanks were then loaded onto a barge along with Tower Module Number 7 of the prefabricated sections of SpaceX's third Starship launch tower. On Saturday morning, fairing recovery vessel Doug was seen returning to Port Canaveral empty-handed following the postponement of the USS F-52 Falcon Heavy mission. On Monday afternoon, the barge loaded with the two vertical tanks and the one prefabricated tower module was moved off of the dock. It then made its way down the Banana River, where it was temporarily stored at the Bale Brothers facility there. That night, Falcon 9 Booster 1081 turned the Florida night sky into day as it launched the Starlink Group 6-34 mission from Space Launch Complex 40. A few hours later, Tug Kurt J. Crosby was seen towing Just Read the Instructions out to sea in support of booster recovery for the upcoming Starlink Group 6-32 launch. On Thursday morning, Booster 1081 returned to Port Canaveral aboard a short fall of Gravitas following its successful third launch less than three days prior. That afternoon, Tug Addie Lou was seen towing the barge with the tanks and the tower section as it departed from Port Canaveral and headed to Brownsville, Texas. Around that same time, Booster 1081 was lifted off of a short fall of Gravitas by the dockside crane and transferred to the dockside stand for processing ahead of its return to Hangar X. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And once again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We'll see you next week. Lab Padre, out.